Luma mats are an easy way to add visual effects to your videos. For example, fog over a cityscape, snow in a mountain scene, or maybe even a UFO flying over New York. And so today we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at a bunch of different ways that you can work with Luma mats. But first, let's take a second and understand exactly what a Luma mat is. Now, there are typically two types of Luma mats. There's the track mat and the alpha mat. And no matter what type of mat you're using, you're basically doing the same thing. You're using a sliding grayscale to determine the transparency of certain visual elements. For example, in an alpha mat, all of the black parts of the mat will make the corresponding parts of the video clip transparent, and the white part of the alpha mat will make the corresponding part of the video clip opaque, and then anything in between black and white will have varying degrees of transparency. Track mats work a little bit differently. The black part of a track mat will go away revealing the video clip underneath, while the white parts will stick around to become visual elements. Now, if all of that was completely confusing to you, hopefully jumping into DaVinci Resolve and actually working with these will make a little bit more sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at DaVinci Resolve. I'm in the edit page right now. I've already got some clips lined up and ready to go. I haven't done anything with them. So we've got a cityscape right here. This is New York through the eyes of a drone. And then we've got a woman standing on the streets also in New York because that's just the easiest city to find footage of. Then we've got a clip here of a nice mountain scene guy walking through the snow. And then here we've got a short clip of some jars sitting in an old farm. And then we've got kind of a multi-layer thing going on. We've got a guy walking through the park. And then if we disable that track, we've got a UFO with a transparent background. And then below that, we've got the guy walking through the park again. Let's go ahead and enable these video tracks. And the first thing that we wanna do is actually get the mats into our project. So let's come over to the media page. Now I've already created some bins here. I've got a bin for my footage, a bin for my mats, and then I'm also going to import my mats as video clips. So let's go ahead first and do the video clips because that's just super, super easy. So we're gonna take this Luma mat here. Let's see here, we've got some smoke. We've got some snow. Got this little transition here. Got some fog, some dust, and some old grungy filmy thing. Let's go ahead and select all those. And we'll just drag them into this bin here. Now let's come into our mats bin. We're gonna take these same clips and we're gonna right click and we're going to choose add to media pool as matte. Now the big difference here is the Luma mats that we imported as video clips can be used in the edit page, while the ones that we imported as mats can be used in the color page. All right, let's come back into the edit page. Make sure we're in our matte video bin. I'm gonna show you how to use these mats in the edit page. So let's come over to our cityscape here and we're gonna add some fog. That would be this right here and we're just going to drag this on top of our clip now you'll see we've got our fog but it's on a black background we want to get rid of that black background so we can see the cityscape underneath so let's make sure that our mat is selected we're going to come into our inspector we're going to come down to composite and we're going to change our composite mode to add and now you can see that we've got a layer of fog over our city and we can change the opacity of that if we want, so we can make it a nice little haze. And then there you go. You can also do transitions with this same method. So let's come over here and we're gonna find our little glitch here and we're gonna drag that. And we're going to set that over here. But again, We've got zero transparency, so let's select that. Composite mode, add. And now, we've got a little very, very long glitch transition. Probably not the best thing to use for a transition, but you get the idea. So that's how we use mats in the edit page. Really simple, really easy, but not a lot of flexibility. Now let's hop into the color page and take a look at how we can use mats that way. 
Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can use these mats in the color page. For example, we can do it simple like we had before. Let's go ahead and grab our video clip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a serial node and we're gonna right click on the new node. We're gonna go add mat, timeline mats, and let's find our fog. There's our fog right there, we got our fog. Now, nothing happened, you can see nothing happened. In fact, let's go ahead and add some saturation here. Maybe bring up our gain a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. That looks good. And now let's select our second node again. And in order to make our fog show up, we just need to grab our offset and increase our offset. And you can see the more I increase it, the more that fog shows up. And if I wanted it to maybe be black, I can bring my offset down and now I've got this weird black smoke. Let's reset that. We'll bring our fog up just a little bit. And now we've got a nice hazy thing going on here. Another thing we can do is actually adjust this mat. So if I select this mat, come over to my key and come down and uncheck lock mat, I can adjust the height of the mat and I can bring that up. So now I've got that haze covering my entire scene. Now that's the simplest way that we can use a mat in the color page. And from there we can build on all sorts of stuff. So next up, let's take a look at how we can do a transition. So for that, we're gonna need to come back into our edit page. And what we're gonna do is create a compound clip, a 12 frame long compound clip. So let's go ahead and back up six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Zoom in on our timeline a little bit and we'll cut there and we'll come back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll cut there and then let's grab these two short clips, right click, new compound clip. We'll just call this transition and hit create. And now let's make sure that that compound clip is selected and head into the color page. And we're gonna do the same thing. Add another serial node, and then we'll right click, add mat, timeline mats, and we're gonna find our transition here. And again, we're going to select our second node and we're going to bring our offset up. And if we play that, Probably need to bring it a little bit more. Go ahead and bring that. There we go. Just bring that all the way up. Play that again. And you've got yourself a little transition. Now, another cool thing that you can do with mats in DaVinci Resolve is you can actually isolate those mats to specific parts of your video clip. For example, let's come over here into our little mountain scene. And once again, we're going to add a new node. And this time we're gonna add a layer node on top of that. So hit Alt L and then we're gonna select our layer node and we're gonna right click, same thing, add mat, timeline mats. And then we're gonna find our snow, which is right here, let's bring up our offset. You can see our snow, but you can see the camera's shooting out from a cave. It's very unlikely we're gonna see snow inside this cave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my power window and I'm just gonna create a really quick power window here. Soften up the inside a little bit, soften up the outside a little bit. And now if we play, we've got snow coming down outside of our cave, but it's a little bit too 
translucent. So let's go ahead and bring our gain down. And there you go. Now, obviously this snow is probably not the best element to use in this particular scene. I would like some smaller snowflakes, but this is the first thing that I found. So this is what I'm using. So up until now, we've been using a single track mat in order to add our visual effects, but we can actually layer these and create multiple mats. So let's go ahead and move on to our little clip of our jars here. I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation a little bit of contrast. That looks good right about there. Let's go ahead and add our serial node. Right click, add mat, timeline mats. And this time we're going to look for our grunge and scratches. Select our node, bring up our offset. That's looking pretty good. Maybe bring that up a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Let's come back to the beginning. Make sure our node is selected. We're gonna add another serial node. Select it, right click, add mat, timeline mats. And this time we're going to use our defocused particles of dust. And once again, bring our offset up. And now if we play that back, we've got some dust, we've got our grunge and scratches. That's looking pretty good. Now, so far, what we've been using are track mats, which removes the black part, revealing the video underneath, and then any white or gray parts will have various degrees of transparency. Now let's move on to our alpha mats, which will make an entire part of a video clip transparent while leaving the rest translucent or opaque. So I've got a clip of my friend here walking through the park. He's not really my friend. I've just used this video clip three videos in a row. So I feel like we've developed a, a personal bond. Anyway, let's go ahead and make this guy separate from the background, basically is what we're doing. So first thing we're gonna do is add a serial node. Now there are a couple different things that we can do here. First, what we're going to do is remove the background Basically, we're gonna separate the background from our subject within the same video clip. So let's go ahead and add a layer node and let's select our layer node and we're gonna right click and click add mat, timeline mats, and we're gonna do our green screen HD. And now you can see, let's go ahead and select our second serial node here. If I grab my saturation, bring the saturation all the way down, then grab my layer node and bring the saturation up, you can see we've separated our background from our foreground. Now that's all good if you wanna work like this, but let's say I wanted to put uh, some kind of visual effects element in between the foreground and the background. For that, we need a few different video layers. And that's why if we come back to our edit page, we've got the same video clip here sandwiching our clip of the UFO. Let's come back into the color page. We're gonna delete our mat. We're gonna delete this, we're gonna reset this node. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our node, we're gonna click add mat, timeline mats, green screen HD. And then what we wanna do is add an alpha output. So let's right click anywhere in our node area and click add alpha output. And then we're going to connect the green dot on our mat to our alpha output. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And now you can see if we come back here and we desaturate, you can see now we've got three different video layers. We've got our background, we've got our middle ground, which is our UFO, and we've got our foreground. And so now let's go ahead and reset the saturation on that. If I come back into the edit page, what I can do is select this UFO, I can make it smaller, change the position a little bit. We'll start it from over here. And then we'll 
come over to the end. And we'll move it over here. And maybe up a little bit. And now if we play that back, whoops. If we play that back, we've got our UFO flying in the background. Got our guy turning to watch it pass him. And there you go. Now, obviously that doesn't look realistic at all. I would have to do the, some color grading on our little UFO there to make it look like it was part of the scene, but you get the basic concept. Now, if you're wondering how I created that Luma mat for that guy walking in the park, well, I did that using Runway ML. I just did a whole review on that earlier this week. You can check that out right here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.